Gato Figueroa. I guess Gato wasn't getting his Gato on last night. <laughs> That's still my dude, though. You know, he came through and showed GYGB love. Yeah, Bruce Train. His favorite location. You see me? I gotta get my suit on. You gotta get yours. I gotta get mine. You gotta get yours. I gotta get mine. You gotta get yours. I gotta get mine. You gotta get yours. Yeah. Welcome back to Garden Grove Boxing. We're on a little hiatus, you know. The radio show's been holding us down. You know, shout out to Talk Shoe, my man Cold Train, Rally Boy, BJ. You know, shout out to Docs, Big Mike. Yeah, Garden Grove Boxing. It's my man Ride or Die. Go boxing by the way. Your man Cold Train, Lime Direct. From my uh, favorite place in the world, that's Starbucks Cafe. Got my dude BJ. BJ, what's good, my dude? Nothing much, just chilling. Just chilling. Yeah. Ryan Guzman making his debut back on the scene again versus Ali uh, Funika, you know, yeah. which uh, it's going to be a tough fight early on for Joan, but I got Joan, you know, getting his Dominican sweepy thing on it. Slipping and dipping to a 12 on 12. You, you got uh, Guzman? Yeah. I mean, I got, uh, Funika? I got Funika. That's what's up, man. I like what he showed me in that, that Nate Campbell fight. Yeah, you know what, for a tall dude, he don't really commit to a jab like I would like, but you know, it is what it is. You know, he is tall. You know, he do put punches together nicely, but right. I just don't see it. I just see, I know Guzman been out of the loop. You know, he been fighting some scabs, but this is his first big test, but I don't really know how truthful Fonica, Fonica is. So I'm riding with, with my dude, Joanne, and uh, hopefully he can get back on track. Part this all, we got an interesting weekend coming up. Yeah. So the, the first fight, what's the first fight we want to discuss? We're gonna talk about the WBA uh, championship fight, uh, heavyweight championship fight rather between. Uh, is it really uh, a championship fight? I mean, it, it's for a belt. Who, who we got fighting this weekend for? Uh, we have one of these alleged belts. We have a uh, value who is a WBA champion. AKA, the Giant, Andre the Giant. AKA Chewbacca. Shout out to the uh, the WWF, shout out to NWA. I was actually trying to school all my young boys on what we came up versus what he's coming up now as far as the ECW, mm -hmm. WWF, NWA. You know, you got your man, the Haymaker, this weekend. You know, David, the Hay Haymaker, taking on Lurch yeah. from the Adams family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Valuev, you know. <laughs> Who you got in that, BJ? I got, um, hey. Mm. Hey? Yeah, yeah okay. hopefully you get a TKO because I don't think yeah. you're getting a decision over in Germany. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I mean, I think hey should, put it like this. If David Hay can beat a value of, two things need to happen. A, he need to retire. B, he need to go back to cruiserweight. I mean, yeah, let's, come on, let's keep it 100 here. I mean, allegedly, he, he ducked both of the brothers. You know, he talked all this trash. He wore the head, you know, the beheading t-shirt. And you know, fake us out, yeah. ruined our summer, ruined the summer. But you know what? That was a cool training move I just did. Ruined our summer. <laughs> Shout, look, at my, look at my shoulders. <laughs> Shout out to Cold Train. To the X's and O's, you know, when we saw Value Web, you know, he's this massive guy. You know, he, he outweighs David Hay by like a hundred and so pounds. Right. You know, when you look at him, you would think that he'd be a really dominant heavyweight because of his size. Does he weight. have the same special punch that Beanie Siegel has? Does he no, have he, that, he doesn't that have, punch? He doesn't have that special technique punch where he can break eye sockets like Beanie Siegel So he's Siegel a big does. guy who, without a lot of bang for the buck. Well, he had trouble with John Ruiz, and allegedly he lost one of those fights. Right. You know, he had trouble with a van, an old Evander Holyfield. Holyfield beat him. Holyfield did beat him and yeah. rocked him a couple times, but Holyfield, you know, he's a boxer too. Right. So more compact punches than uh, more, Hay, though. Exactly. So it, you know that's the issue with Hay is that will Hay be able to land? I can see Hay landing early. Will be, Hay be able to land in the, the later rounds? Think about it. Hay comes to fight. He comes in good condition. You know his stamina is so so. A lot yeah. of people say that Monty Barrett even knocked him down in the fifth round. It wasn't counted as a knockdown. Okay. They even say he knocked him down, but he got him and whoop Monty Barrett behind. In that round. My concerns in the fight, well, they're not really concerns because I'm, I'm going to pick Hay, but I have question marks. Mm -hmm. If he can't get the Giant out of there early, which I don't think he can, mm -hmm. you know, how will he hold up in the later rounds? Because I think he's going to shoot his little early trying to do something spectacular. What? And for the record, I was leaning towards Hay in that Klitschko fight because I was banking mm -hmm. on Klitschko leaning lean back yep. and getting caught with something. Yep. So... I got I got hey I got hey in a, a decision uh, um you know starting off very exciting mm -hmm. ending off you know kind of a snoozer right what do you have 
I have hanging a knife round knockout. Knife round knockout. So yep. there you go. Don't don't. He's another guy, another tall guy that doesn't you know command a jab from a smaller opponent. You know, keep to keep Hay. You know, at a, at, okay. at yeah, exactly. So. I'm going with David Hay, the haymaker in there. You know, I'm looking around. Well, if it don't happen within seven rounds, Hay might be in some trouble because, you know, he, he ain't got the best set of stamina in the world. So, and this latte is so good, man. You know, I, can, <laughs> I can drink these things all day, man. It's a long day, man. But um, Chad Dawson and uh, Glenn the Rule Warrior Johnson is popping off. Oh, real quick, GYGB radio show every Monday night. Telling y'all, if y'all don't, if the show is one thing, the radio is another. If, you, if you're not at GYGB, uh, kicking it with GYGB, then you're nowhere on Monday night. Tell them, BJ, we get it in. Definitely. What, what are we talking, Jeff Mayweather? We talking, you know, my dude, Gato Figueroa, Lamont Rob, Peterson. Rugged Man. Rob the Rugged Man. R.A. the Rugged Man. The now <laughs> famous R.A. Rugged Man. Shout out to R.A. Lamont. Um, Lamont. Um, Glenn, as I mentioned, every Monday night. Talkshoot.com forward slash TC forward slash 637 uh, 63796. Again, talkshoot.com forward slash TC forward slash 63796. Be there, be square, man, because we're getting it down, man. Every Monday night, Thanksgiving show coming. You know, I'm doing a show Thanksgiving morning. You know, we, we don't stop working on GYGB. Oh, televised. Hey, by you web televised. It is not. It's actually on pay per view for us. <laughs> All right, keep going. Let's, I don't even want to discuss that. Go ahead. Uh, we have we have Chad Dawson. Okay. Who Bad is, Chad? Shout out to Connecticut. Yep. Who's UConn. actually fighting in his last Ray who, Allen? Ray Allen. Who begets Justin? <laughs> Just exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Jesus, shuttle work. <laughs> and we have. So uh, that makes you Denzel Washington. Washington. <laughs> I don't want to be in jail though. Where you at with it, Big? I think it's gonna be a close fight. Honestly, I think really. The, I okay. think Glenn going to try to squeeze this out, but right. I'm, I'm going with the hometown mm -hmm. decision. The hometown. So when you say hometown, like a rivalry? What's interesting about that, this whole thing, is the fact that Chad Dawson, this is his second rematch in four fights. So, right. you know, he fought Antonio Tarver, then he fought Antonio Tarver again. Right. And, or me, he might fought Glenn Johnson, then fought Antonio Tarver, now he's fighting... And Tony, he fought the Tampa Tiger again. Now he's fighting Glenn Johnson again. Right. The record I had, I had Glenn Johnson winning that last fight. I called the fight for Glenn. I had Glenn out working him and winning that fight. You know, I, I, it was a close fight. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't have no animosity. I don't have any animosity towards anybody. But you know, they gave the fight to Chad, who was on the rise at the time. But I'm mean, like I told Train, I, I saw something in that second Tarver fight where I just don't know. And I know a lot of people want to kill me on this. I, I do have a lot of respect for Glenn Johnson, and I'm not banking on his age. I think he's right. one of these fighters that didn't take a lot of punishment, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win a fight. Yep. And he's going to out hustle you, mm -hmm. like you know, si similar to Timothy Bradley. He's going to try to out hustle you to win this fight, and I'm I'm going with Glenn again. I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat. I'm going with Glenn again. I think Bad Chad is, is a totally different fighter than what he was two years ago. I know y'all. I know y'all. You know y'all have some doubts in him, y'all see things that he can correct, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, there's not too many dudes in the game that can fight going backwards like Chad Dawson. There ain't too many dudes in the game that can sit in the pocket and turn that shoulder turnbuckle style like a bad Chad Dawson, other than Floyd Mayweather. Yes, he gets lackadaisical, yeah, he get he caught laps. out there, he, you know, he, he, he has lapses. That's one of the knocks on him, and probably, I don't know if it's due to boredom. Because I saw something in that Tarver fight where where I, I thought Chad was a little too patient. He went in spots where he just wasn't active. Enough. Now, you're talking about the first Chad? I mean, uh, second, Tarver second, second Tarver fight. Tarver fight? Okay. Second Tarver fight. I saw him, head like because Tarver was trying to be a little more aggressive with him in that fight. And there were certain situations where I just thought Chad was a little too um, patient. Of course, Chad's a better boxer, mm -hmm. a better inside fighter. But I'm just gonna go on pure aggression. I, I think Glenn's gonna eke a decision. You know, I just think Glenn is 40 years old. Chad is the younger, he's the fresher fighter, he's the better boxer. Um, Glenn's gonna come straight at him. I mean, listen, man, just because Glenn gave Chad a bad fight don't mean he has flaws in his fight game. I mean, we can go on. I mean, Marco Antonio Barrera lost to Junior Jones, you know, but right. he's a Hall of Fame fighter now. So, I mean, everybody has that, you know, Jose Luis Castillo gave Mayweather a tough time. You know, everybody has those fighters that they have a style to match their style, you know. 
I just think that Chad is just, you know, we talking about being out of work. I think Chad is just going to give Glenn a lot of angles. I know Glenn is going to be resilient. He's durable. He's going to mm -hmm. keep coming. But I just really think that Chad is going to be really diligent. It's, it's his time to shine. And uh, it's unfortunate, man, because, you know, everyone has ducked the fight, you know, ducked Glenn a lot. You know, he never really got the recognition. Oh, is he 41? 41. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, he, he did win fighter of the year. Um, back in 2004, because he had beat Roy, and then he went and beat Target in December. So that was good for him, but, you know, this guy's really been, you know, he's a really humble guy, man. You want to see people like him win, but I just think Chad is really and truthfully going to take this fight. Yeah, the old heads, man, they, I just, I just, I think they willing to do what they got to do. And there's nothing against Chad, you know, but I just think he's going to get out of work.